the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Morning, Mr. O'Rourke. Hey, good morning to you, Billy. Going to Sunday school, huh? You listen to your teacher now. I will. I have to. <laughs> well, so did I when I was your age. Hello, Officer O'Rourke. Uh, tough of them are to you, Sally. Aren't you coming to church today? No, not today, child. Patrick O'Rourke has the duty this Sunday. Good morning, Patrick. Ah, uh, good morning, Gretchen. And a fine morning it is. Yeah, it is a beautiful Sunday. Yes, and the chimes warm me old Irish heart. How your husband keeps playing play so beautifully all these years is a mystery to me. How does Herman do it? It's an old profession, Patrick. I'm glad you like them so well. Like them? I love them. It's a beautiful gift. That's what it is. A gift from the hand of the Lord. Yeah, it is, Patrick. Well, I must be going to the church now. If I'm late, Herman will never let me forget it. I say, has Herman got an apprentice in training to take his place just in case anything happens to him? He's been thinking about it, and I've been after him to get one. His rheumatism seems to be getting worse all the time. Uh, he'd, he'd better do that. It'd break me heart if the bells broke down. It sure would break me heart. Patrick O'Rourke and Herman Schmidt are about the two most popular men in Naughty Pine. But one thing we must all realize, there are many kinds of fame in this world, and I know that there isn't one of us who would want to be famous because of wrongdoing. There's a greater fame than this, fame brought on by acts of love and kindness. This is the kind of fame Officer O'Rourke and Herman have. You listen to our story and you'll find out what I mean. It started something like this. As usual, Paul Katzen was busy cleaning the Naughty Pine Jail as slick as a whistle. Paul cleans every cell carefully several times a week. It takes him quite a while to do this because he's handicapped and can't move as fast as most people. Patrick O'Rourke got Paul the job and he's doing real well. But to get back to our story, Paul was cleaning one day when Pat walked in... Top of the barn to you, Paul. Ah, good morning, Patrick. Do you know something? Uh, by the gleam in your eye, I'd say you have a bit of good news for me. <laughs> I started a savings account at the bank. Got $40 stashed away already. Oh, I am proud of you, my lad. <laughs> proud I am indeed. Oh, I can't thank you enough for getting me the janitor's job here at the jail. It's a good feeling, working every day, regularly. Oh, don't thank me, laddie. It's you that has got to do the work, and a good job you do at it. Uh, I'll see you later, Paul. Uh, okay. Uh, you going to work on the toys now? Aye, that I am. Uh, Christmas isn't far away now, you know. And I've still got lots of toys to fix up yet. I know. And you make a lot of children happy. Now, there's a fine-looking drum, if I've ever seen one. Should make a little soldier happy enough. Aren't you coming home soon? Ah, kitty girl. Isn't this a fine-looking red, red wagon? Hey, that's a real beauty. Who are you giving it to? That's a secret. Say, Catherine O'Rourke, you're the spitting image of your mother that you are. She worried about me, too, you know, when I didn't come home from going off duty. I know she did. 
And it's because you need rest after walking your beat all night. Ah, but Kitty, darling, coming here to me toy shop relaxes me better than any medicine ever did. Don't they look fine now? All painted and mended and fit as a fiddle. Pretty soon we'll be carrying them off to the orphanage and the needy children for Christmas. I guess you win. You always do. When are you coming home to sleep? Oh, about an hour, Catherine. About an hour. Okay, I'll make you a hot meal. Now, don't forget how long an hour is. No, no, I won't forget. Oh, Daddy. Dad? What, Kitty? Where'd that pile of broken toys come from in the corner? They weren't there last week. Oh, they're for next year, Kitty girl. Already? You haven't even given this year's crop away yet. That's right, and you better let me get back to work, or I'll never get them done. They've got to be perfect. Miss, see, I'd better write that down now so I will not forget. Every year your list of special music for the bells gets larger and larger, oh, Herman. Oh, Gretchen, it does. But the music from the bells uh, makes people happy. There is so much sadness in this world that uh, they should try to bring a little joy. Ah. But I worry when you climb up the long, steeple stairs. It's not easy for you anymore. Yeah, I know, but um, I will manage all right. Uh, my arthritis seems to be much better lately. Uh, I, I thought it was because you, you move more freely than you did, but I worry about you when you climb to the bells. It, it must be very painful. Well, if it is, uh, I never seem to feel it very much. Now you know something about these two men, their unselfish love and personal contributions to others. One afternoon, the boys and I were sitting in the office. It was late. We were catching our breath after returning from a rough and tough week of feeding thousands of animals made foodless by deep snow. Gray Wolf slumped in his chair and said, <sighs> I glide that over. <laughs> you, you mean over until they eat it all up? <laughs> that is truth, you speak, <laughs> You know it, Sonny, you know it. I've never been so cold for so long in all my born days. Even the marrow in my bones has got <laughs> oh, lumps of ice oh, in it. It's marrow <laughs> in your bones, old timer, not right. marrow. <laughs> you see, I'm cold so clean through, can't even talk straight. Oh, it's tough. It looks like more snow, too. Hey, Bill, there's a crowd gathering down the street. What? Huh? Oh, well, wonder what's happened now. Well, they look like somebody lay on ground. Hey, that's a police officer on the ground. You're right. Come on, let's get down there on the double. Hey, let the rangers through. Uh, step aside, please. Hey, it's Pat. He looks real bad. He sure does. You better get an ambulance and a doctor right away. Right, I'll go back and call from the office. Well, we already did, Bill. They're on their way. Yep. They sure are. I can see the flash here coming up the street. Oh, that good. Pretty soon we have poor fellow in hospital. I knew this would happen. He overworks himself on those toys. Those miserable toys just to make a few children happy. Oh, they can rot in that workshop for all I care. You don't really mean that, do you, Kitty? Making the children and other people happy is Pat's hobby. Every man has to have a hobby, and a lot of men have had heart attacks and lived many years afterwards. You wouldn't deny your father the joy he gets in fixing the toys for the children, making folks happy, would you? Bill, I'm sorry, but Dad isn't even middle-aged anymore. He's getting up in years always wanted him to retire for at least five years. He's worked so hard all his life. Stop in, Patrick. Working would kill him, Catherine. Who said he isn't going to live to retire? Now you dry your tears and look up to the Lord. He has the answer to all this. Well, 
Thank you for those kind words, Stumpy. I, I needed them. <laughs> Tain't nothing compared to what your father's done for folks all his life. Hi, Doc. Hello, Henry. Uh, how is my father, Dr. Jones? As good as can be expected. Come on, Doc. You can talk plainer than that. Oh, I know. It sounds like routine statement, but it isn't. He's resting fairly well and seems to be relaxed. That's all I can tell you for now because, well, I honestly don't know what'll happen. I've personally taken charge and you know, we'll stay with him until his condition changes one way or the other. Oh, you, you, you're afraid he isn't going to recover, aren't you? No, 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 Catherine. Let's not jump to conclusions. We're all going to have to use a little patience. I'm just a doctor. I don't know any more about what's going to happen in the future than any other human being knows. Uh, I'm sorry, doctor. I, I didn't mean to needle you. No, I know you didn't. Remember, a doctor always wants his patients to recover. It's just as hard for me to be patient as it is for you. Uh, why don't we all take a walk down the block and have a bite to eat? We'll feel better and it'll help pass the time. It's a fine idea. Uh, but you better use the back door of the hospital. Why the back door? Well, the lobby is jammed full of people who come to see Pat. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I don't want to talk to all those people. Not now. Well, you got to tell them something, Catherine. Uh, come on, we'll help you. There's Kitty now with the Rangers. Quiet, uh, quiet, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, Kitty, tell them what you know about your father. Uh, all you dear people are so kind to ask about my father. We just talked with Dr. Jones, and, and he says it's too early to tell anything. Oh. Dr. Jones says Dad is resting fairly well and, and seems relaxed. And that's all I can tell you so far. Uh, I'm sorry, but but thank you for coming. Hey, what's everybody so quiet about so suddenly? I don't know. Wait, listen. Must be the bells. Now let's go outside and listen. Famous. Oh, he's famous, all right, Kitty. Because he's given of himself unselfishly to others for years. Your father has set an example and has become a real symbol of Christian love. He's never been too tired to help, too selfish to give, too weak to lend a hand. You uh, hardly eat at all. I can't, Grey Wolf. I haven't any appetite. All those people, it's so wonderful. I just wish Mother was alive to experience this, too. Uh, your mother, fine woman. She would have been very proud, too. You're going to tell your brothers about their father? Yes, as soon as we leave here. I'll send telegrams from the hospital. The five little O'Rourke's, as he called the boys. Now all grown men. Bill, there's Mrs. Schmidt, hmm? and she looks frightened. Oh. Uh, Gretchen? Gretchen! Oh, thank goodness you're here. They told me at the hospital I'd find you here. Catherine, uh, I'm so sorry about Pat. It's about Pat that I need help. Why? What's wrong? Uh, sit down here. Tell us all about it. Herman is in one of his bad arthritis attacks again. Oh, how terrible. This one is the worst he's ever had. Who played the bells, Gretchen? Herman. He heard the terrible news about Pat and, and went right to the church to play the bells because he, he knows Pat loves them so. Oh, oh, isn't he sweet and thoughtful? What about the bells? Why aren't they playing now? They're broken. Are you sure they're out of commission? Yeah. At least as 
far as I know. Herman was playing them when something went wrong. He tried to climb up to the belfry to fix them, but his arthritis pained him so he couldn't climb the ladder. Somehow he got home and he's in bed now. Herman wants you to try and fix the bells. Uh-huh. Uh, Henry, scoot over and get a squad car, will you? Yeah, sure, I'll be right back. Don't worry, Gretchen. Bill will get them working again. Oh, I, I hope so, Kitty. Uh, Herman's so sure to help your father recover. And now with Christmas so close on us. And Herman's promised so many folks he played the bells for them. Oh, don't you worry. We'll get things fixed up all right before you know it. I wish I could feel as you, Stumpy, but, but I can't somehow. Those bells are so complicated, and it's impossible for Herman to get to the tower. He can't even get out of bed without screaming. Well, I'm a plenty bad, but we do all we can to help. Henry will be here with the car in five minutes. Uh, Stumpy, you and Henry go back to the hospital with Kitty and keep me informed of Pat's condition. You understand? Yep, we sure do. Gretchen, Grey Wolf and I will go back to your home with you and see what we can do to get the bells working. Dr. Jones. Oh, Kitty, Gretchen, fellas. Well, how'd you sneak up on us, Doc? It wasn't uh, hard the way you were so engrossed. Gretchen, I'll uh, try to see Herman as soon as possible. Pat has taken a turn for the worse. Oh, no. Now, now, let's not go off the deep end, Catherine. I want you to come to the hospital right away. You know, Pat keeps asking for the bells to play. They seem to give him the will to fight to live. Daddy? Daddy, this is Catherine. Dad, can you hear me? Dad? Catherine, darling. Don't, don't cry, Kitty. Where, where are the boys? I sent them telegrams and told them to come quickly. I yes, a, a good girl. They're not going to make it in time. No, no, you've got to fight, Dad. I don't, I, I don't seem to have the strength to fight. I'm, I'm tired, Kitty. What happened to the bells? They, they were so, so nice. The, the bells are broken and Herman can't move. That's too bad. They were so beautiful. Kitty, I'm tired. Would you pull the window shade down? <laughs> Henry, get to the church and tell Bill he's got to get the bells fixed. They seem to be real important to Pat. Right away, Stumpy. Dad, why are the bells so important? They uh, remind me of your, of your mother. The, the toys, Dad. What about the toys and the children? I, I, I love them all and, and you. But I'm, I'm old and I'm tired, Kitty. <coughs> Kitty, uh, let him rest now. <laughs> He's done quite a bit of talking, and it's uh, draining what strength he's got left. All right, Doctor. Stumpy, is Bill working on the bells? Yep, he's over at the church now. You know, as strange as it seems, I believe those bells could save Pat's life. Maybe Dad would be better off with the Lord. Well, now, Catherine, it's not within our power to determine life or death... Our job is to do everything we can to save a life. Hey! Look out the window! Why, it's all the children from the orphanage. It's the boys' choir! Listen!
Gretchen? Oh, here. Here, let me help you. Oh, thank you, Bill. Oh, boy, coffee and sandwiches. Oh, you better clean grease off hands best you can, young fellow. Uh, what's a little grease among friends? Here, come <laughs> on, give me the coffee. I'll pour. Right. Here's a sandwich, Bill. Oh, thanks. Are you making any progress, Bill? None at all, I'm sorry to say. Well, I have to go back to the house because Herman might try to get out of bed if the phone rings. All right. Thank you for the trouble you went through to fix these sandwiches and coffee. Yes, Mrs. Smith. It sure tastes good. Ah, oh, it was no trouble. You the ones who have the trouble. I have to run now. Boy, Bill. My muscles are sore from trying to get those gears to move. Uh, you're not only one of me. Oh, Bill, what do we do now? That, Mr. Grey Wolf, is a mighty tough question. Well, you speak plenty of truth. Well, we know the power is all right, because there's juice flowing into the electric motors. Yeah, but beyond that, nothing. Nothing at all. That's just it. Maybe now that we've got some food in our stomachs, we can think better. Bill, let me turn on the motors once more and see what happens. Oh, Maybe this time we get brainstorming and find out what's wrong. Okay, pal, turn on the juice. Right. Here goes. Ah, it's no use, fellas. Might as well admit it. Let's go down and talk to Herman. Boy, I never thought I'd see the day when we had to admit we're licked. Yeah, and this is the day, Henry. Yeah, we're licked, all right. Good and proper by a bunch of gear wheels and nuts and bolts. This machine can't tell us what's wrong, and we sure can't find out. Let's go talk to the one man, the only man, that can talk this machine's language. Uh, Gray Wolf, will you take it while Henry and I try to help Herman with this drawing? Oh, uh, I do. Oh, oh, what a disgusting thing, this arthritis. I cannot even hold a pencil. Patience, Herman, patience. Bill, oh. Bill, I, I want to talk to you in private. Hmm? Oh, uh, sure, right away, Gray Wolf. If it is bad news, I want to hear it too. It is bad news, is it not, Gray Wolf? Yes. Pat is very low. Expect him to live only a few hours. Oh. Stop to say, Kitty wants you to come to hospital at once. All right. We'll leave right away. Let's go, fellas. Bill, will you talk to Dad? Tell him you're trying to fix the bells. Maybe it'll help. Please? I'll be glad to if it's all right with Doc Jones. Huh? Oh, sure, go ahead. Kitty might have something in the idea. Pat, this is Bill. Can you hear me, Pat? You, you know those bells you like so well? Do not argue with me, Gretchen. I am going up into the tower and that is all there is to it. Now, help me. Get my shoes on. Please, Herman, please don't try it. If you will not help me, I will do it myself. Oh. Oh, oh Gretchen. I know what you are trying to do, Herman, and I love you for it. But, but you've got to think of your... Think of what? Myself and I might help Pat? Stop talking. What is the matter with you? Yeah, I, I will help you, Harriman, because you're doing what you think you should for an old, old friend. Fate, I get your hat and coat and help you with your shoes. Thank you, Gretchen. I'm sorry, Kitty. I guess there are no words left that can give him strength. Perhaps you're right. How long, Doctor? Uh, not very long. He's slipping fast. The children singing didn't seem to revive him much. 
He noticed it. That's about all. Now we'll just have to wait and pray and then accept God's will as best for all of us. Bill, it's, it's often hard to accept his will, isn't it? Yes, Kitty, it is. Yes, Lori. Oh, Gretchen, how much farther? Oh, halfway, Herman. Halfway. Oh, keep me from falling down the stairs. I, I'll only be able to. To make this fence, you know. Yeah, I, I, I feel, Herman, I feel. I, I must not stop until I reach the top. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I made it, Gretchen. I you, made it. You must rest now. Rest for a few minutes. No, no, no. Not until I finish the job. Let me see now. My tools... Gretchen, will you? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I will pick up the tools for you. Well, which one you need? Uh, uh, that's fun. Uh, the here? Uh, no, 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 next to uh, it. Uh, d- d- this one here? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Now, help me yeah. around the machine. Careful, just slow. I think I know where the trouble is. <laughs> Nurse, uh, prepare a hypo of adrenaline. This may help him to rally for a while. Yeah, thank you, that's all. Listen, the bells, they're working again. <laughs> I'll open the window. The bells are playing. Herman's playing the bells for you. Can you hear them? Yes, Kitty girl. Well, I hear them. They sound so so strong and clear. <laughs> Well, here he is, Pat. We got him out of the tower and put him in a wheelchair and brought him over. Herman, you're a you're a wonderful friend. I can't thank you enough for the agony you went through to fix the bells. Just seeing you smile is thanks enough. And and hear the bells. Now I have an apprentice to help me when I don't feel so good. Oh, Herman, it's so wonderful to see you having help now. Daddy, we brought all the toys, Bill and the fellas and I, and there's a mob of people downstairs waiting to wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> there is? Well, what are we waiting on? Let's go. You know, you're kind of a wonderful old flatfoot. And you know what, Catherine, darling? What, Dad? I'm not so old that I can't take you across my knee for calling me a flatfoot. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on, and help me on with me robe and slippers. Well, it might interest you to know that after several months' rest, Pat went back to pounding his beat, and Naughty Pine had the best Christmas ever because everyone thought about Pat and Herman, how they gave of themselves, and everyone followed their example.